Hey guys, thanks to the Codex of Assassin's Creed, we have now got some information about the plot for the Assassin's Creed movie. So to start off with, Abstergo's complex is hidden inside an old church in Spain. So the Abstergo set has exposed walls that make it look like it's built with it within an old Spanish church. Fassbender's character, Callan Lynch, was on death row for murder in Texas, but his execution was faked and he was whisked away to Spain. There are 30 to 40 other patients in Abstergo, and all of the main patients that Callum interacts with have ancestors from a time period in a previous Assassin's Creed game. Callum travels back, no, no, Callum, sorry, travels back via the Animus more than twice during the movie. Marion Cotillard's character, Sophia Ricken, who is running the Abstergo prison, trying to identify where vi violence begins and creates treatment that eradicates violence from in society. Jeremy Irons plays her father, who is the head of Abstergo, and may or may not have more sinister motives. Callum sees Ricken as the warden of Abstergo facility. Production took place on the 007 stage at Pinewood Studios in London, which housed the Abstergo set. The Abstergo set was built so that it, much of it was possible to connect for real from the corridors to the recreation area to the individual cells so that the cinematographer Adam Arkapur could shoot a lot of long unbroken takes without a lot of cutting. They shot a recreation of the Spanish Inquisition. Fassbender is only present day actor who appears in the past sequences in the film. The film was roughly 65% present day sequences, 35% regression sequences. I would rather it be 50-50 to be fair. The ancestor of Michael K. Williams' character is based on voodoo and trickery, while Matthias Varela's ancestor is Yusef, a Middle Eastern assassin. Some of the present day characters exhibit powers and extraordinary abilities. The bleeding effect is in the film as Kalf sees a vision of his ancestor who teaches him fight moves. Eagle vision is also an important part of the film. For the scenes are located in Malta, they have 900 extras in 15th century clothes. They changed the design of the Animus to make it more interactive for actors and Ubisoft liked it so much that they may incorporate it into a future game, so that Animus thing might be incorporated into a future game. British freerunner Damian Walters served as Michael Fassbender's stunt double for freerunning sequences, and if you haven't seen that guy's Google him, he's pretty cool. Sadly there will be no scene of Fassbender jumping into a wheelbarrow of hay. They made 3,000 weapon props getting the wrist blades to work for real, while also looking pretty was really tough for the team but they pulled it off so the hidden blades used in the films do actually work god there's a fuck ton of information here they treated the weapons like easter eggs so weapons taken straight out of the games are scattered throughout the films connor kenway's bow from assassin's creed 3 makes an appearance ubisoft gave a prop maker a bible of every weapon ever made for the games that they could use as a guide even though the game wasn't out yet justin kurzel wanted to include a weapon from assassin's creed syndicate so ubisoft obliged Ubisoft did not make any specific requests regarding which weapons needed to be included in the game, but they did request that some of the weapons after filming concluded. The Assassin's cons costumes took 2-3 to three months to make and were all handcrafted. There are 8 versions of each costume, with an entire costume team devoted to each of the Assassins. The toughest costume to create was Aguilar's because it had to be designed first in order to set their vision of the Assassin. They wanted to differentiate, differentiate from the 15th century sequences from the present day sequences through colour palettes with the flashbacks taking on a more earthy tone in contrast with the stark, ster sterile nature of present day. The costume designers had to construct the hoods so that they would maintain their point even while the actors were running around, which is tougher than it sounds. It took them two, 20 to 30 versions to create a hood that would look like in like the game and maintain its shape while the actor moved. Fassbender was attracted to the game because he wanted to do a fantasy film that was rooted in science and he also thought the idea of Templars vs Assassins was intriguing. Fassbender likens the themes of Assassin's Creed to Star Wars and there's a dark and a light side and they're both contradicting one another all the time. Filming took place over the course of 80 days. There'll be a strong emphasis on practical effects, doing as much in camera as possible like having actors make a 30 metre leap for real. Kurzel didn't want the movie to feel like a superhero film. He wanted to embrace what is to be human, what it is to be human, through practical effects and parkour in, in intensive stunts. Production had to be completed by November the fifteenth to make way for Star Wars Episode Seven to take over the stage. So that's all the information we got. Thanks for watching, guys. Comment what you think about this stuff. Hope you enjoyed. Be sure to go ahead and like, subscribe, share, comment. I'll see you on the next one. See ya.